Muy buenas tardes, estamos saludando a todos los docentes que hasta ahora se conectan a nuestro webinar Using what you have, identifying assets for distance instruction and learning. Este es un webinar que está destinado a docentes de inglés del sector oficial y docentes de primaria y le damos la bienvenida también al resto de la comunidad educativa que se conecta hasta ahora. El día de hoy tenemos un webinar muy interesante cargado de información muy importante respecto a aquellos recursos y estrategias educativas que nuestros maestros de primaria y de inglés también pueden utilizar con el fin de promover espacios y experiencias de aprendizaje de, del inglés como lengua extranjera en circunstancias de aprendizaje a distancia. Por supuesto, como todas las ocasiones, antes de iniciar, queremos eh, compartirles algunas de las estrategias del Programa Nacional de Bilingüismo. La primera de ellas está relacionada con Aprender Digital, donde pues, le recordamos que hemos dispuesto una serie de recursos digitales que están abiertos para toda la comunidad educativa, no hay restricción de uso. Se trata de los materiales de Bonnie Bonita que están para estudiantes de primaria. English Please y White to Go, que son los libros de texto del Ministerio de Educación Nacional que están orientados para la secundaria. Y finalmente en alianza con Pearson sacamos una colección de libros de lectura y literatura adaptada para el aprendizaje de inglés. Estos, esta colección es muy bonita y ha sido consultada por más de 16 mil colombianos. Eh, y los invitamos a seguir aprovechando de este recurso educativo que está disponible en Aprender Digital. Por otro lado, como parte de las estrategias del Plan Nacional de Lectura y Escritura, eh, ya hace varios meses se lanzó la biblioteca digital de este plan. Eh, esta biblioteca incluye más de 3.000 recursos de lectura. Dentro de esos 3.000 recursos, pues resulta que hay 170 libros en inglés que también pueden ser utilizados por los estudiantes. Ustedes pueden acceder a esta biblioteca a través de Biblioteca Digital, .colombiaprende.edu.co o de igual forma pueden acceder descargando la aplicación digital que está disponible y donde también van a poder descargar los libros una vez los hayan solicitado prestados. Por último, pues hemos estado trabajando en los últimos meses en alianza con la Embajada de Estados Unidos, con Peace Corps, precisamente que nos acompaña el día de hoy, con la Red de Centros Colomboamericanos y la YMCA, en un proyecto colaborativo que busca generar espacios de práctica intercultural del inglés, donde nuestros docentes de primaria y docentes de inglés tienen la oportunidad de interactuar con docentes en toda Colombia y también con docentes a nivel internacional. Invitados a estar muy pendientes de las próximas convocatorias. Ya cerramos el, hace casi un mes una convocatoria con 1.600 docentes que se inscribieron y hemos completado un impacto pues, que ha sido rotundo y que ha sido una de las estrategias más reconocidas por nuestros docentes. Ojalá que el próximo año, cuando estemos lanzando nuevamente las convocatorias, ustedes se puedan registrar si aún no hacen parte de esta iniciativa. Por otro lado, tenemos la aplicación digital Video One Challenge, que ya esta semana completó 250 mil usuarios en Apple y Android que han descargado la aplicación digital. Eh, a través de esta aplicación, que es una estrategia transmedia, hemos desarrollado procesos de formación, webinars y procesos de acompañamiento a más de 1.200 docentes a nivel nacional y que estamos muy orgullosos de poder generar esta herramienta, no solamente como una herramienta de uso en la época de emergencia sanitaria, sino también como una herramienta de trabajo que busca apuntar al tema del mejoramiento de las competencias de nuestros estudiantes, pero también busca proveer a los docentes de formaciones y capacitaciones en otras áreas que pues, la aplicación digital ofrece y que están muy invitados también a estar pendientes de las convocatorias que el Ministerio va a estar lanzando al respecto. Bueno, acá tenemos a Talkative, que era el programa que les estaba mencionando hace un ratico. Acá, adicional a los programas que aquí acabo de mencionar, quiero contarles que hemos distribuido más de 738 mil libros de texto a nivel nacional, que estamos formando más de 1.447 docentes a nivel nacional en diferentes temas que se adaptan a las regiones y al perfil de los docentes. Tenemos un proyecto que se llama School to School, que ha beneficiado a más de 251 docentes y 25 escuelas normales superiores que se pusieron a la tarea de conformar un modelo educativo bilingüe que responda a la necesidad de país de formar docentes normalistas superiores bilingües. Y nuestra estrategia de IELT Influencers que busca promover la aplicación digital. Eh, en cuanto a los libros de Pearson, como les mencioné inicialmente, más de 16.430 colombianos se han registrado y han consultado estos libros de de lectura y por último la biblioteca digital en lo que se refiere a los 180 libros que están disponibles en inglés para aprendizaje del inglés 
se han generado más de 6.525 préstamos. Esta estrategia de webinars que hoy estamos continuando y que inició en el mes de junio y que se ha enfocado mucho en presentar temas y estrategias que le puedan funcionar a los docentes en medio del aprendizaje en casa y ahora, y ahora en un modelo de regreso progresivo a las aulas. Precisamente ha tenido más de 77.471 reproducciones de seis webinars que ha desarrollado el Programa Nacional de Bilingüismo en el marco de la estrategia del Ministerio de Educación de Contacto Maestro. Eh, nos complace mucho que los docentes cada vez más se acercan a nuestros espacios y esperamos hoy completar muchísimas más reproducciones y por supuesto que la información que vamos a presentar sea de útil uso para nuestros estudiantes y nuestros docentes. Por último, recordarles que si ustedes son docentes del sector oficial de inglés de grado sexto a once, ustedes cuentan con una herramienta que se llama Dashboard o Tablero Inteligente para la Aplicación Digital Video One Challenge. En esa dashboard ustedes pueden hacer acompañamiento a sus estudiantes en el uso de la aplicación digital. Ustedes van a ingresar a colombiaaprende.edu.co slash be the one challenge. Al final de la página van a encontrar el tablero inteligente. Les va a pedir su número de documento y la institución educativa a la que están asociados. Y a través de un proceso de verificación ustedes podrán ingresar y ver el número de estudiantes que se han registrado y las actividades que han desarrollado de su colegio. Muy importante utilizar esta herramienta para que Video One Challenge no solamente sea una herramienta de aprendizaje autónomo, sino que también cuente con el apoyo de ustedes como docentes de inglés. Muy pronto vamos a anunciar una muy importante noticia al respecto de Video One Challenge que tiene que ver con primaria. Ojalá que estén muy conectados a nuestros próximos webinars. Bueno, voy a hacer el switch en inglés. Este es un webinar exclusivamente para docentes de inglés y docentes de primaria que enseñan inglés en el sistema educativo oficial. I would like to welcome uh, Bridget Carey and Adriana Ivona Aguirre, who are our presenters today. Uh, Adriana Ivona Aguirre is the director of the TELFL program, teaching English as a foreign language at Pisco, Colombia. She holds a bachelor's degree in modern languages from the Universidad Distrital, where she also earned her master's degree in applied linguistics for English teaching. She also holds a master's degree in education and technology from London University Institute of Education with over 20 years in both public and private sectors in Colombia and abroad. She has experience in education, project management and international volunteer programs. Bridget Carey is the TEFL Regional Manager for Pisco, Colombia. She holds a bachelor's degree in foreign languages from the University of Connecticut and has lived in Colombia since 2012. Bridget has experience as an English language teacher and has also worked in many international exchange and volunteer programs, including Word Teach and Volunteers Colombia. She is currently a candidate for a master's degree in intercultural leadership and in management at ICIT Graduate Institute. Adriana, Bridget, thank you very much for being with us today. And I know, I'm sure that today we're going to have a great webinar. I, we are going to be connected via Facebook, so inv we invite all our teachers to use the comments on Facebook to ask your questions to the presenters, and at the end of the conference, we are going to be able to present them to our presenters. Hi, Bridget. Hi, Yvonne. How are you? Good afternoon, Carlos. Thanks uh, for your uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon, dear, dear teachers. We're very happy to be here, and thanks for your participation. Okay, so the first question that we have, the first um, um, issue that we have here is what is Peace Corp? So Peace Corp is an independent agency of the United States government that sends volunteers to over 60 countries. Here in Colombia, we collaborate with the Ministry of Education and SENA. Our volunteers work as co-teachers and teachers in rural and semi-rural areas uh, on the Caribbean coast and the Indian region. Right now, we don't have any volunteers because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, we continue supporting the Ministry of Education and hope our volunteers will return soon, hopefully next year. As you have in the presentation, uh, we have two of our former volunteers. One of them, uh, he worked at, uh, in the Revuelta Magdalena, and the other one, he worked uh, at Los Palmitos Sucre. So here we can see them working as co-teachers and also helping some teachers with technology. So our agenda for today, uh, next slide, Carlos, please. 
Okay, first of all, we're going to present some objectives and introduction. Uh, second, we're going to have a warm up activity. Third, we're going to talk about how is teaching English during the pandemic. So we're going to have an overview of teacher reality in 2020 in Colombia in rural areas. Number four, the next slide, please. Uh, we have ideas from the field. So we're going to share some ideas from public school teachers in Colombia. Five, we have a conclusion and a wrapping up. And six, we will have some a, a space for questions and answers. Okay, next slide. Please go ahead. Our objectives for today are to guide teachers to identify their assets and how they can apply them to remote English teaching to recognize Colombian public school teachers resourcefulness and creativity and share their best practices. And to provide Colombian teachers with useful concrete tips and strategies for remote teaching using what you have. Next. We're going to start today with a warm up activity. So we invite you to participate in those Facebook comments. When we ask the questions. We're going to read two descriptions of schools in Colombia, School A and School B. Please tell us in those comments, where do you prefer to work? Next. Now, School A is very poor and the students have very few resources. Their families don't have many resources at all. The students don't have Wi-Fi, they don't have computers, no tablets, no internet at home. They share a cell phone with their brothers and sisters, and they do most of their schoolwork with a paper and pencil. The teachers are not good with technology at all. They don't like using technology and they struggle with it. And overall, the students don't like English class. They're bored with those traditional activities grammar, copying, and things like that. Now, School B is in a low-income community, and the students and families have some resources. The students have access to a cell phone, and the school provides them with photocopies to do their work. The teachers are very creative using basic technology platforms, so they use things like WhatsApp and Google, and they share ideas and support each other with technology. And finally, the students love creative projects and activities in English class. They love to make videos, art projects, and anything else visual and fun. So please read those descriptions and tell us where do you prefer to work? We'll give you a few seconds and then Yvonne is going to tell us what people are answering in the comments. Okay, so we can see some answer right now. Uh, yes, most of the teachers, I can see like lots of bees here. So it seems that most of the teachers would like to prefer, would like to work at school B. Okay, school B seems to be the popular option. Now, let me tell you something about these two schools. Let's talk about them. Carlos, next slide, please. School A and School B are the same school. They sound different in the descriptions, but we're talking about the same exact institution. Next. The difference between these descriptions is that School A is focusing on what they do not have. So they say they have no resources, no Wi-Fi, no computers, there's no funding, the teachers can't use technology. It's just focusing on what they do not have and what they need, the deficit. Whereas school B is focusing on the resources and the assets they do have. They do have teachers and basic resources, cell phones and other things that they can use for teaching. Carlos, can you return to the list of descriptions? Go backwards. There. So if we look, school A is very poor, school B is low income. They have few resources, but they do have some resources. The students don't have computers, they don't have Wi-Fi, but they do have 
cell phones. They do have paper and pencil and photocopies that they can use to work on English. The teachers are not good at technology. They don't feel very skilled in technology, but they know how to use WhatsApp, Gmail, Google. So they use those platforms. And the students don't like boring grammar, traditional English class, but they do like exciting, creative English class through videos, audios, things like that. So you can see, we can look at the same exact situation and the same exact uh, school with limited resources and view either what we don't have or what we do have. And later in this presentation, we're going to give you lots of examples of teachers who looked at the resources they did have available and they're using them to teach remotely. Carlos, can you go forward again? And the next one, perfect. Now, when we shift our perspective, we can focus and identify the assets and resources that we do have and succeed as teachers, even under challenging circumstances like remote teaching during a pandemic. And we're going to show you how teachers in Colombia are doing this right now and the ideas that they shared with us. Next. Okay, thank you, Bridget. Okay, uh, teachers, you know that teaching during this pandemic has brought some challenges. So we, we have a question for you. So we want you to answer this question. What describes your experience so far? What are the challenges that you have faced during this time of pandemic? So can you please write your answers uh, on the chat box? And really, can you please help me to read what the teachers are saying? So what are the main challenges that you guys have faced? Okay, we'll give you a few seconds to respond. Please tell us about your challenges. So we know from talking to teachers that a lot of you are faced with limited resources. Here we go, here's a few. We have managing new tools, communicating with students, definitely student motivation, that's difficult. Limited resources, rural populations, the student's interest, students with no internet connectivity, yes. Teaching English online, connectivity, students without access to internet, motivation, technology, teachers. Excellent. Thank you so much for participating. We got a lot of answers there. Go ahead, Ivan. Thank you, teachers. They, those are great answers. So, um, so we can summarize those answers in the following categories that we have a uh, created with Bridget. So, the first one is high stress and anxiety. So. We all have faced this, uh, this uh, feelings during this pandemic, not only the teachers, but I think the, the whole population um, has faced this kind of um, the, the, the stress and anxiety. The other one is limited resources. We will discuss this topic today, uh, today and you, yeah, nobody was prepared for this pandemic. So nobody was ready for with the resources um, to, to, to face this kind of situation. Third one, the third category that we have created is called changes and unknowns. Yeah, of course, nobody knows what is going to happen. Nobody knows what is going to happen now and in the future, but and nobody knew what was going to happen. So that's something else that we have faced. Next one is new strategies, technology and spaces. All of us needed to learn how to use WhatsApp, Facebook, Zoom, Google Drive, et cetera, for learning purposes. And we needed to learn how to teach remotely from home. So those are new things that we had to, to learn. And the last one that we have created is called pressure on parents and teachers. Suddenly, everything changed. Parents needed to be the students' tutors at home and teachers needed to find ways to connect with the students. So all of these are challenges that we have faced. I think we can, and I think they, they are the categories that we, that summarize your answers. Thank you very much for your answers. So now the, uh, is you to focus your attention on the resources that you have to overcome these challenges. 
So the next question that we have for you is what resources do you have? Who is supporting you? Okay, so remember, we need to focus on what we have instead of that we, uh, that we are missing. So Rick, can you please help me to, to read the, the comments that we have in the chat? And yeah, you have 20 seconds, please, to write your uh, responses. Sure, let's wait and get some responses. Another very common answer was students' motivation. So we're also going to talk about that and offer some ideas of how to keep students motivated. Of course, yeah. We will discuss that topic later. Okay. WhatsApp was mentioned. Um, phones being able to call students using printed guides. The best resource is teacher motivation. Yeah, that's awesome. The internet, apps, WhatsApp, study guides, parents, principal, and coordinators, definitely. Guides, internet, resources, Google Classroom, free websites, guides, parents, Zoom. Yes, Aprender Digital. Excellent. Photocopies, WhatsApp, WhatsApp, students motivation, English please, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a very <laughs> popular option here. Cell phone, laptop, internet, Zoom, students. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. Okay, thank you, Bridget, for summarizing the, the teacher's replies. Okay, so again, we have created some categories that can summarize your answers. So the first one is skills. You know how to use a computer. You know how to create a PowerPoint presentation. Some of you have, know how to record a video or how to edit it. Uh, some of you are good at singing and dancing and uh, creating a, like fun activities for the students. So skills, you, you, you have skills. The second, the second one is materials. Some of you have the English please and way to go books, even in digital or printed version. So you do have those materials. You have the main suggested curriculum to follow. So that's a very good resource. And also you have some material online. The third one is people. You have the support from the other teachers at school. You have the support of the IT teacher of somebody in the school knows about technology. So if you don't know how to use Zoom, you can call you get the teacher that is expert at, at technology and can help you to, to solve your, your doubts. And you also have the support from the administrators. Um, okay, um, people, uh, technology, sorry. So you have a computer, you have a cell phone with data, so you have access to technology. And finally, we have community. So most of you have the support from parents and also the community in general. So you have lots of things to overcome the challenges that we have uh, talked about before. So all of these materials, all of these resources are very good for you to, to start thinking about or to, to teach your students. Okay, next. So what we did, we did was to reach out the teachers that used to work with our Peace Corps volunteers in the, in the last couple of years. And we asked them because they know how it feels to teach from home. And we asked them to, to, to tell us about their experiences and to, to tell us how they use the resources that they have at the moment, how they use their skills, how they use their materials, how they use the people and technology and community to teach during this time. So several of them share with us some useful strategies, some best practices to teach remotely in this like unique time. So I'm going to to uh, mention the names. Uh, okay. So uh, the first one is uh, Professor Ivan Salatelara from Aracataca Magdalena. Uh, we also have uh, Alicia Gonzalez from Buritaca Magdalena. We have Soraya Monterrosa Perez and Margarita Villalba from Los Palmitos Sucre. We have Fanny Esperanza Albaguillo from Toca Boyacá and Leandra Daza Cepeda from Tijuana Boyacá. So thank you, teacher, for sharing with us the, uh, these resources and materials. Okay, thank you, Bridget, go ahead. Thanks, Yvonne. 
I just want to thank everyone who's responding in the Facebook comments. There are so many great ideas about resources coming in. So we love that participation. Now, when we talked to these teachers, we found that most of them have things in, con in common. Their context is very similar, despite being in different departments and regions of Columbia. Next. Next slide. And again, thank you. Back. The teachers that we talked to, can you go back one more? So the teachers that we talked to, these six teachers, they are all in rural or semi rural environments in Colombia in small municipios. They work flexible hours and schedules. So they're not just working a set eight to five schedule or just in the morning. They're working really all day long and, and into the evening, supporting students who can't connect at the same time, calling students, talking to families, planning. And most of their students do not have internet connection in their homes. So they don't have Wi Fi. And most of them don't have a personal computer, a laptop, or a tablet. The majority of students and teachers are using cell phones. So they're connecting to their classes with cell phones and connecting with their teachers and classmates. Usually it's borrowed from their parents or maybe a sibling. As all of you were mentioning in the comments, WhatsApp is overwhelmingly the most common tool. It is such a useful and simple app and who knew that that was going to be the ultimate teaching tool for us in this day. And finally, the teachers are mostly giving instructions in Spanish. Although we are teaching English, the idea of giving instructions in Spanish helps both the students and the parents understand the assignments clearly. Now, next. When we talked to these teachers, we found six best practices that all of them are using. And we were able to, to categorize those to share with you today. Those six practices are cool content, say it, show it, sing it, great guides, different delivery, family first, and WhatsApp wonders. So we're going to give you a few examples of each of those best practices that these teachers are using with their English classes in Colombia. And Yvonne is going to start off with our first teacher. Thank you, Reed. Okay, our first teacher is Lady Alexandra Lassacep. She's from Tibana, Boyacá. Eh, Tibana is a small municipio, and she What's works that? at. So we're going to give you so, a few sorry. Of each. Okay. So, eh, sorry, something happened here. Okay, so she works at Institución Educativa Gustavo Romero Hernández, where most of the students. More or less 80% of the of the students live in rural areas and don't have good connection or computers. Most of the students' parents have a cell phone and a WhatsApp. So therefore, they needed to be very creative and reach all her students. So the first strategy that she has uh, shared with us, so in next slide, Carlos, please, is a fix in the, in the category of content. The assignments and projects proposed by the teacher are relevant and based on students' everyday context, like the local economy. Students are more interested in learning English this way, content is related to their lives. Here we can see an example of one of the her students' homework, in which a student describes a farmer for her community. So you can see a picture there that, uh, with the description of this farmer from the town where she lives. And also, we have a video where a student talks about the Ruana. So, um, it's, it is important those two assignments were sent uh, through WhatsApp. So, Carlos, can we play a little bit of the video about the Ruana? Ruana. The Ruana is done in the Oshaka department. This product is made of a shape wall. It was produced by the Department of Design. The product serves for the protection of the court. 
It is self conversion of the department. Uh, the Rwanda often a soft texture. It's a um, traditional product. Just having different columnar toners. Thank you. Okay, that was a great example of how to use a wax up. Also, lady, lady use wax up. Next slide, please in a very creative, accessible, and easy tool for students and teachers and families too. So for example, uh, the teachers share a song with lyrics on their WhatsApp status and invite the students to send a video or audio singing the song, which is a great opportunity for the students to practice their pronunciation and also to learn some new vocabulary. Another way of using WhatsApp is uh, to check attendance. Students have to do attendance in a specific style. So here you can see in the presentation a little, uh, the, the picture in which the students have to write their names and also they have to add a little emoji with star eyes. So it is important to mention that they, they she does the, the attendance because they meet uh, every week at the same time and on the same day. And uh, so that's why she calls or oh, she does the, the attendance. Here you can see an example of where a student who wasn't paying attention or he didn't, he didn't uh, understand the instructions, but most of the students did understand the instructions that she gave. Uh, it is important um, also to mention that if the students are not uh, like able or they know they don't have access to internet at, uh, where the class is, is, is running, lady follows up with them later or calls them on the phone to make sure that they, uh, that they like, um, follow the content and understand the content and uh, yeah, have the, the, the ideas from the, from the class. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, another strategy uh, using WhatsApp is called English Challenge. So and it, this strategy fix on the, our category that a uh, call, sing it, say it, show it. It is a strategy where students have to create videos, audios, photos, and other products to engage with English. They usually send these videos through WhatsApp as well. Students record videos of songs. They dress up like superheroes. They tell tons to stories or poems. And here we can see an example of uh, this activity where students recite a tone twister. So can, can we please, Carlos, play the video? I wish you were a fish in my dish. Be a fish in my dish, please. Thanks. Great, that's another great example of how you can use WhatsApp. And then, uh, next slide. So she also creates great guides. Uh, the, great, the guides that she creates are photocopied by the school and they are delivered with, to the students with the refrigerios that Boyacá Secretary of Education provides. So all the students have access to the printed copy of the guides. In this way, um, like even the ones, even the ones that live far away, they use content from English, please, and way to go. So they follow the the curriculum suggested by Ministerio de Educación. Lady sends explanations and pronunciations through WhatsApp. So she uses WhatsApp in really like different ways, um, and students are given options for evaluation based on the type of resources and connectivity they have. So. If they have uh, like lots of data, they can send videos. If not, they, they can send audios or they can send pictures or a, a even phone calls to, to check uh, the understanding of the lesson. Here we can listen to a file sent by the teacher uh, explaining some of it from the guides. So, Carlos, please. Thank you. Guide three, page three, vocabulary pronunciation. Repeat. What is this? It's. What are they? This is a. These are. Book. Notebook. Pencil. Color. Backpack. Crayon. Eraser. Ruler. Blue scissors. Thank you, Carlos. So yeah, so this is a uh, our our 
teacher, Lady Alexandra Daza, and her wonderful strategies. So we can continue with next teacher. Um, I know we have one question before. So the question is, how have you used and distributed great guides for your students? So have you done something similar to what Lady has done? How can you make sure that the students have the, the, the guides that you have created? So you can share your ideas in the Facebook chat. Um, it would be great. So, so you, we are going to give you 20 seconds and Bridget, can you help me please to read the comments? Sure, let's give them some time. So yes, a few schools say they do use guides. Great. Lots of use of WhatsApp again. Google Classroom using videos about routines. Okay. Videos and guides. Again, WhatsApp. So, yes, it sounds like a lot of teachers are using learning guides with their students and sending them through WhatsApp, being very creative. Thanks everyone for sharing. Okay, it seems that WhatsApp is very popular nowadays, read for education. Definitely. Okay. Excellent. So you can continue with next teacher. Thanks, Ivan. Our next teacher is Professora Alicia Gonzalez, and she's in Buritaca, Santa Marta Magdalena. She teaches at Institución Educativa Distrital Julio Jose Ceballos Ospino. Buritaca is a small corregimiento of Santa Marta. Many of you may be familiar with it as a very touristic area. People go there to go to the beach, the cabañas, and enjoy the river as well. So it's a small rural area, but receives a lot of international and Colombian tourists. Alicia gives her classes using her own program that she designed called English for You. And she reaches her students at their homes, she goes out to their fincas and, and up to the mountains sometimes as well. So she is reaching all of her students. Most of them have very limited internet access or no internet access at all. Buritaka also has frequent power outages. So sometimes there's no electricity for students to work on the internet or their computers or at all. Next, please. Alicia also uses what we call great guides, where teachers create learning guides for students to complete. In this case, the students' families pick up the printed photocopy guides at the school, and the guides have very simple activities with different options. So students with technology can complete the activities or without technology. They have options to complete those activities and assignments. The content is open-ended or based on the English, English Please and Way to Go curricula. And you can see here an example of one of Alicia's guides. It's very simple and easy to read in English and Spanish. So both the students and their families can understand. And there are open-ended activities that allow them to choose their options. Next. Here are two more examples of Alicia's great guides. You can see they're simple, colorful, and inviting for students to work on. On the right, the students have the option, they get to choose five images, so they have that freedom of choice. And over on the left with 10th grade, they also have sort of open-ended assignments that are interesting for them to complete. So it keeps students motivated because they are actually interested in the content. And next slide, please, Carlos. Here's a picture of Alicia working with some of her students. So for those students who don't have connectivity, she actually shares her laptop and internet connection so students can copy down their work and be connected even without those resources. Next. And another best practice that Profe Alicia is doing is what we call cool content. 
So cool content means that the assignments and projects for English class are relevant to students' lives. They're interesting and involve the context that they live in. In this case, Guritaka is very touristic, as I said, and the school has a focus in tourism. So Alicia integrates tourism into her students' English assignments. You can see this example of the guide is about bird watching. So students who may be learning how to be bird watching guides or they work in that industry can practice English through that context. Next slide. And here are some more examples of that cool content. So students draw pictures of tour guides and label them in English. And again, this is more interesting for the students because it's something that they're motivated by. They're thinking about the jobs they will have in the future and how they will use English. You can also see a picture of one of Alicia's students doing his homework up in the mountains of the Sierra Nevada. So our question for all of you, how do you incorporate cool content into your English classes? How do you make your activities relevant to your students' lives? So Alicia used tourism. How do you use cool content in your classes? You could tell us in the comments and then Yvonne will read a few after about 15 seconds. Okay, so I wanted to give you some time for you to write and uh, your answers. I see here that people like a lot of bird watching activity. Okay, so we're waiting a little bit. Uh, one one teacher here says, I bring my students real content, new videos, songs, video games, etc. Great ideas. Uh, that content that's amazing because they are related to the students' lives. Talking about their own environment, perfect. Yeah, it's meaningful learning. Um, talking in taking into account interests and likes. It says Annie Rubiano about the common activities that people share. We have landscape. Wow, this is like we have lots of comments and they are passing so fast. Contextualizing topics, using authentic material, doing projects to enhance the students' motivation, culturalism, talking about their likes and interests. So thank you so much, teacher, for the, all of these wonderful ideas. Okay. Thanks, Ivan. Next. Okay, so our next teacher is Professora Fanny Esperanza Albaguillo uh, from Institución Educativa Rafael in Toca. Toca is a small municipio in Boyacá. Most of the students in Institución Educativa Rafael Uribe live in the rural area with basic resources to study. Some of them don't even have electricity. And some families just have a cell phone at, the, uh, at home to use. So just one, one cell phone. For many students, connectivity doesn't reach living area or doesn't exist. Therefore, this teacher has to be very resourceful, um, has been very resourceful to reach her, her students. She has also made use of WhatsApp for students to send their homework. Uh, and here uh, we have the teacher has recorded a message. So can you please, can you please, uh, Carlos, uh, play them the video, please? Hi, dear teachers. Greetings from Boyacá, Colombia. I want to tell you that our job is not for teaching people. Our job is for inspire lives. Happy day. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you so much for your introduction. Okay. Um, so, uh, next slide, Carlos, please. Okay. So, the first... Um, in, in the first example, Fanny has involved the student family in their learning process. This is so important. Here in this picture, we can see an example of this, where the student describes her mother and sends a, pic sends a picture of his poster using an acrostic. So that's very important to involve families in the student learning. Next one, please. In the next example, uh, we can see how on earth a student family participates in the class assignment. So let's watch a little part of this video sent uh, through WhatsApp.
Hi, my name is Alejandro Cho. I am 15 years old. I am a 10th grade student. I study at the Technical Institution Rafael Uribe in Tocao, Yacá. I live with my mother, Hi. my father, Hi. and my sister. Hi. During the quarantine, I have shared with my family and we have remembered stories. with my distant family, we make video calls to remain them how much we love and miss them. These times of crisis, be informed. And okay, Carlos. You can What's stop your... a little bit now because we don't have enough time. That, so that's an, another ex excellent example of how to involve families in the student learning. Okay, next slide, please. But the question that you may have is like, why do I do when the students don't have data or a cell phone, when they don't have any kind of technology? So in this school, the school has provided a phone with data at the local papeleria for the students to send in assignments. So the, the, the papeleria has the, the, a phone and the students go there and send and use the phone and send the assignments they have to, to send for the class. Um, and they send the assignments using pictures or audios. This is awesome, isn't it? So here, this is an example of one picture that the one student has sent. Next, please. So the teacher Fanny has also motivated students to develop assignments and projects that are relevant and based on students' everyday like current events. This sample that we're going to watch in a little bit is part of our categories called Cool Content and Say, Show It and Sing, sing It, where the teachers ask students to create videos, audios, photos, or other products to engage with English. So let's watch one part of this news created by the students. <laughs> Welcome to the World News Can, and we started with the against the coronavirus. Diana tells more about the situation ahead. Well, that's Alejandra. It turns out that there are people who refuse to believe in the coronavirus. Just as you listen, irresponsible people take the pandemic as a game. In different localities of the country, the clandestine parties, family, gangsters are constantly present, attended by more than 60 people. Thanks, Carla. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the time is short here. That's why we can uh, reproduce or play all the videos. So, yeah, so the question that we have for you right now is, do your students say, show it, sing it in English class with videos or pictures? So, if they, if they do so, how? Please share your experience with us. We can, can again, help it with the, student, with the teacher's comments. Sure. I love watching those creative student videos. They're so, so good. And looks like they had a lot of fun making them, which is important. So let's see. Okay, we have some some teachers do role plays, they send videos, pronunciation through audios. Great. Again, what's up? Using screencast app to record videos. Podcasts, excellent. Such a good tool. Videos. Videos, songs, pictures, videos, role plays, TikTok. Yes, I'm sure they love using TikTok. Google Meet, radio podcasts, videos, different apps. Great. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Those are awesome ideas. Okay, our next school, the two teachers we're going to talk about are 
Soraya Monterrosa Perez and Margarita Rosa Torres Villalba. And these two teachers work at the Institución Educativa Los Palmitos in Los Palmitos Sucre. Los Palmitos is a small municipio just outside of Corozal and pretty close to Cincelejo as well. It's a very small town and with rural areas, lots of agriculture in that zone. And most of the students do not have a lot of technology available. In fact, the school was able to let the students borrow some laptops and tablets so they would have options at home. And the teachers were able to work with the parents and get most of the students an internet connection. So most students are able to connect to the internet, but it's not very fast connection or always reliable. So let's see what some of their ideas are. Next slide. The first practice that these two teachers are using is what we call different delivery. And that's where students, the schools and teachers find creative and different ways to get students connected to class. In this case, Soraya and Margarita use Google Classroom. If you haven't tried Google Classroom, it's a very simple application with the Google Suite. If you have Gmail, you can easily create a Google Classroom. And there are a lot, a lot of resources online and a lot of strategies to use it to your benefit. The, these teachers share access to the Google Classroom via WhatsApp. So they actually use this tool to plan their classes and to share the classes with their students. So it keeps everyone organized and connected through a very simple application. You can see an image of that to the right. Next. Another way that these teachers are getting students involved in their English classes is using what we call say it, show it, sing it, which seems to be a very popular option for many of you. That's where students create videos, audios, or photos to show how they're engaging in English. So let's watch just a bit of this video of a group project with a song in English. Today, my group and me, we're going to sing the song Imagine the John Lennon. My group is conformed by Maura Perez, Abel Perez, Andreina Olier, Kiara Gonzalez, and my person. We hope that you, that you enjoyed it. Imagine there's no Hawaii. It is easy if you try. No help belongs to us. Above the only sky. Thank you, Carlos. We can't watch the whole video, but it actually involves multiple students working together to create a music video. And another strategy or best practice that our teachers are using in Los Palmitos is what we call family first. And that's when students get their family members, their parents, brothers and sisters, their grandparents, cousins, everyone they can, they get them involved with their English class. And this doesn't mean that their parents are fluent in English or bilingual. It just means they're involved in the process. So let's see, watch this example again of what we call family first. Thank you, Carlos. So this is such a good example because it shows that the father was helping out his daughter's English class just by playing his guitar and learning a very simple song. So they were sharing time together and practicing her English. Now, our question for all of you is, 
How do you get the students' families involved? How do your students practice English with their families? Please tell us about it in the comments and Yvonne will share with us. Yvonne, okay. after a few seconds, whenever you're ready. Yes, we're going to get in some, some time, like uh, 10 seconds to write. And yeah, I'm going to take uh, the opportunity to say that I love that video, like to see that parent that, that father like singing is amazing. Um, okay, to give them some time. They are saying that there are, there are great activities making conversation and recording their voices. Girita, Girita is shared with us. It seems that most of the of the uh, the teachers involving families because of course the families are who or the, the parents are the ones who are at home with the, the students, so they have to be involved anyway. Like even like reading the guides or providing some information, or uh, if they don't understand, I'm sure they call the teachers. I say dialogues, dancing, singing, interviews, um, uh, songs and games. Uh, they develop challenges together where the students teach to the parents or dialogues, uh, presentations, interview the families, uh, conversation. Wow, lots of comments. Projects, um, okay, singing, playing, dancing together. Uh, okay, excellent. So, great comments. Thank you, teacher, for sharing your experiences with us. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you. Okay, so our final teacher is um, Ivan Saratelara from Institución Educativa John F. Kennedy in Aracataca, a very famous touristic municipality in Magdalena. Um, so it is a big town. Most of um, the students also live in the rural, in rural areas and don't have access to the internet. And they have a major problem that is the electricity goes out frequently. So that's another problem that they have. Next, please. So Ivan works alongside with other teachers from his school and he has found a very creative way to reach his students and deliver, deliver his lessons. He is teaching using two local radio stations, a great way of connecting with the students. Everyone, everyone has access to the radio. So uh, next one, please. The teachers record podcasts with lessons and send them to the two radio stations and then share the information and links about the radio program on Facebook for the students and families. So the students don't have a radio, they can listen to the program on Facebook. So they have like both ways to do it. The project Facebook page is called El Tren de la Educación. And if you use Facebook, go ahead and check this page and join because it's awesome. So can, next one, please. So I'm going to read uh, the post. It says El Tren de la Educación. Atención, toda la comunidad educativa de la Cataca y Fundación en especial a los estudiantes de la institución educativa John F. Kennedy. Los Aprender a cantar hoy a las 3 y 30 p.m. en Impacto Estéreo y 4 p.m. en Macondo Estéreo. So here you can see how he shares the information on Facebook. So everybody knows what is going on. And next one, please. So most of the students or their families use Facebook. So the teachers take advantage of this to ask them to complete assignments like sharing an audio or on a uh, singing a song in English or tongue twisters. Here there is an example of one post from the teacher where he invites the students uh, to tune in to impact the stereo and Macondo stereo to listen to the class. Uh, when the radio program is on, the students follow the learning guides shared via Google Drive. So here we can see the link where he shares the information on Facebook so the students can go to the link and download the, the guide. So when the program is on on the radio, they follow the guide. So they have like they have three different resources to be connected. And so this is another amazing way to reach the students and yeah, another great example of using what they have. So next one, please. The question that we have for you is have you done a different delivery in your classes with radio or something else? Please share your comments. And Brady, can you please help me with to read the comments from the teachers? Sure. We have like 10 seconds to read. 
I love this radio example. I think it's so creative and so resourceful and such a great way to get information to students who don't have internet access. So let's see. We still have lots of people sharing ideas about involving family, which I love. Using the institutional blog. Oh, that's great. Luis Amparo Fuentes Marulanda. Señal Colombia radio program. Excellent. Andrea Cruz. Anyone else? Okay, let's keep moving. Thank you for sharing those ideas, everyone. Okay. Okay, now that we've shared the ideas from our six teachers, we're gonna go back to those six best practices for remote teaching. Carlos, can you advance? The first one, as you recall, is cool content where assignments and projects are relevant to students' lives and it increases their motivation because of that relevance. Different delivery is where our, our teachers and schools are finding creative ways to reach students, whether it's through WhatsApp or an institutional cell phone or through the radio. We have say it, show it, sing it, which is probably one of the most popular options or best practices, just using any sort of pictures, videos, audios, any sort of product in English where the students engage with the language. Family first, this is my favorite, is getting family members involved and seeing the comments, you all had a lot of ideas from students sharing poems to doing homework together to learning simple phrases. And it's important to note that the families don't have to speak English to get involved in the learning process. That's so a really great practice. We also have great guides, of course. It seems like every school is helping print out learning guides for students to have access to and finding different creative ways to use them. And finally, we have our WhatsApp wonders, which are those little tricks and strategies that all of you are using with WhatsApp, whether it's creative ways to take attendance or having an English challenge in the WhatsApp status. That's become such a fundamental tool for teaching now in the time of the pandemic. So don't forget these six practices, which most of you are already using. And Finally, we just want to remind you that all of the teachers we talked to, the teachers who shared their ideas with us today, they work in public schools in Colombia with very limited resources. Their students do not have internet access. They don't have computers. They live in, in humble situations with limited resources. However, these teachers were able to focus on what they do have. They focused on their skills, their creativity, using their community members and using simple resources like cell phones, Google, WhatsApp, videos, anything they can think of. And doing so, they've been very successful in engaging with their students and continuing teaching remotely. So thank you so much to those of you who shared with us. We really appreciate all of your input and it was great just seeing those ideas here on the camera, on uh, the videos. Next. Our, our last question for everyone is what new ideas are you going to try in your classes? So what is something you learned from our teachers examples or from maybe someone else's comments throughout the presentation today? Please share with us and Yvonne will share some of those ideas. Okay, so we hope that you um, that you have um, some ideas here to replicate at your schools and in your classes. So please let us know what you you think that you can replicate if you haven't tried before. Okay. It says here, a uh, Jaje Solera, great uh, create conversations using avatars, games, uh, improve my guides through new activities, uh, involve the family. That's awesome. Um, videos with the students uh, involve their families as well. WhatsApp Wonders, excellent. They are using the names of the categories that we have created. Games, gamification of each topic. Okay, audios, etc. So, yes. So, 
we are glad that you um that you find useful the strategy that we have shared and it's not it's not our work it's your work so those all, all, all of these materials and resources have come uh, um uh, from you from from teachers that are really there working remotely and working with real students okay next one please so uh, we want to say thanks like all of you not just the the teachers uh, that have shared the ideas with us all of you you have been able to work uh, during this difficult time using few using like what you only have and you have created amazing amazing activities and your students are so motivated so this is recognition to your work to your uh, creativity to everything that you have done so far for your students and yeah this is what we want to say so thank you uh, for your amazing amazing work really want to add something Okay, just thank uh, you to everyone and thank you so much for participating. It, it was hard for us to watch all the comments, but I'm sure you shared so many ideas and it's really exciting to see that teachers all over the country are using the same activities and the same sort of um, videos and, and different activities that you're using. So congratulations to all of you. And if you have other questions about these activities or strategies, you can contact us at our email addresses below. Thank you. Yeah, here we have the, the contacts from Peace Corp. So feel free to, to get in contact and ask any question you may have. Thank you. Carlos. Adriana and Bridget, thank you very much for this amazing presentation. And I'm sure this has been really enriching for our teachers who have now more strategies and more activities to implement during these times. Thank you very much for all the teachers that have been participating and that have been connected have been connected to our webinar today we invite you to go online on contactomaestro.colombiaprende.edu.co where we have all the schedule for our next webinars i hope we can see you soon thank you very much for joining us bye bye thank you adriana thank you Bridget. have a nice day thank you bye, -bye. Thanks.